Second night of violence erupts in Tinderbox, Britain. Over 100 thugs are arrested. Police cars are torched and more officers are injured in riots as anger continues to grow following Southport stabbings. Hello. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Express Insights News. Thank you. Parts of Britain were engulfed in riots for a second night in a row as anger continues to grow over the Southport stabbing frenzy which claimed the lives of three young girls. Simmering rage over the senseless attack exploded into violence again as thugs torched police cars, hurled glass bottles and clashed with officers across London, Hartlepool and Manchester last night. The shocking scenes across the country came just hours before Merseyside police announced that a 17-year-old boy has been charged with murder following the death of three girls at a Taylor Swift-themed dance class in Southport. False speculation online that the suspect is an asylum seeker who had travelled to the UK on a boat appears to be fueling the shocking violence which started outside a mosque in Southport on Tuesday and spread across the UK last night. The misinformation is believed to have originated from a Russian-linked fake news website. The suspect, who is from the nearby village of Banks, Lancashire, but was born in Cardiff, Wales, has been charged with the murders of six-year-old Bebe King, seven-year-old Elsie Dot Stancombe and nine-year-old Alice De Silva Aguirre. The teenager, who cannot be named because he is under 18, has also been charged with 10 counts of attempted murder and possession of a bladed article. He has been remanded in custody and will appear at Liverpool Magistrates Court today. As well as the three fatalities, eight other children suffered stab wounds in the bloodbath when an attacker stormed the summer holiday club. Five youngsters are in a critical condition, as are two women who bravely tried to save the children. Southport locals, including Elsie's mother, have called for the violence to stop after police vans were set on fire and bricks were hurled in violence that left 53 officers injured on Tuesday. But her wishes were ignored as angry mobs took to the streets, in other parts of the country, amid mounting anger. Many were filled with anti-migrant rhetoric. The largest demonstration took place in London at an Enough is Enough protest, where 100 thugs were arrested. Activists took to the streets chanting the name of English Defence League founder Tommy Robinson and yelled, Stop the boats. Riot police were also pelted with glass bottles in Manchester, after protesters targeted a holiday in hotel where migrants are believed to be housed. The most chaotic riots, however, were seen in Hartlepool where thugs were seen throwing objects at riot police, striking their shields and setting a police car on fire. A series of pops could be heard from the fire which destroyed the vehicle, before there was a louder bang as the fuel tank went up in flames. Right-wing protesters posed for selfies with the wreck after firefighters put the blaze out. One person was live-streaming the chaos when an Asian man was punched by a thug as he tried to walk past in what appeared to be a racially motivated assault. Missiles including glass bottles and eggs were hurled at the police who were braced for attacks with shields after hundreds gathered in the town center. Officers shut off a large section of Murray Street, a busy road full of takeaways and shops. It is understood the Salam Community Center came under threat and police were working to keep the area safe. Rioters were also filmed shouting racist chants. Many had their faces covered and aggressively clapped their hands and waved their arms in the air during the violence. Cleveland. Police said four arrests had been made for various offenses including public order and a fray and they were taken to custody. Chief Superintendent David Sutherland said, We currently have a high policing presence while officers respond to disorder that is taking place in Hartlepool following a protest that began this evening. At this stage we believe the protest is in connection with the incident in Southport earlier this week. Our officers are facing missiles, glass bottles and eggs being thrown at them and have made arrests as they remain in the area to protect the safety of those living in the community. I want to urge members of the public to stay away from the area. MP for Hartlepool Jonathan Brash issued a statement which read, I'm deeply concerned about the situation that is developing in Hartlepool this evening. I will be meeting with police to discuss the response to this incident and would urge CALM to allow our emergency services to do the job. These events do not represent what Hartlepool is or the values that our people hold.
Violence is never the answer. In Manchester, shocking footage emerged of a group of thugs, some masked, throwing bottles at riot police vans and offices. It is understood they were targeting a hotel where migrants are being housed. The most large-scale clashes took place in the capital, however, as riot police were forced to fend off a group of flag-waving thugs on Whitehall. Some protesters were wearing t-shirts with the faces of the Southport victims on, despite families calling for an end to the violence. Police were forced to put on riot gear after chanting activists threw cans and launched flares outside Downing Street. Around 1,000 right-wing activists descended on Whitehall last night, with some waving a Union Jack flag banner with the words, enough is enough. Stop the boats. Huge scuffles between police and protesters broke out, with officers wrestling activists to the ground and leading them away in handcuffs after they tried to breach police lines. Loud chants of, oh Tommy Robinson, and, we want our country back, were also heard as protesters surrounded the cenotaph, despite police vans trying to protect the war memorial on Whitehall. Beer cans and glass bottles were launched at a line of police in riot gear who had assembled to block Whitehall in front of Downing Street. Other protesters attempted to kick down a fence and were confronted by riot police. Some activists were wearing red caps which said, Make Britain Great Agar in a reference to Donald Trump's Make America Great Agar in movement. Others wore t-shirts calling for Tommy Robinson to be Home Secretary and Reform UK leader Nigel Farage to be Prime Minister. Many protesters were draped in England flags as the Enough is Enough protest got underway shortly after 7pm. One with a Union Jack flag wrapped around him was seen mounting a traffic light in front of an army of riot police officers. Shortly after 7pm, the protesters, many of whom were drinking alcohol, began marching towards Parliament Square. A few hundred protesters chanting, Rule Britannia, Save Our Kids and, Stop the Boats attempted to leave the pavement opposite Downing Street in defiance of strict Metropolitan Police conditions on the protest. The Metropolitan Police said demonstrators taking part had to stay within a certain area and leave at 8.30pm. But many stayed on longer than this. Protesters forced police to put riot gear on as they threw cans at police outside Downing Street. But that didn't stop one protester, who confronted one police officer and lifted up the mask of his helmet with his finger. They also threw flares onto the statue of Winston Churchill in Parliament Square and shouted abuse at nearby. Pro-Ukrainian demonstrators and police. A police helicopter was also seen flying over Downing Street amid the unrest. Around an hour into the protest, activists started trying to break a police line on Whitehall to access Parliament Square. More bottles and cans were being thrown at police in riot gear who were desperately trying to hold off the protesters. Activists then attempted to kick down a fence to circumvent a police line on Whitehall. Others ran past police towards Trafalgar Square and police formed a new line outside the cabinet office. The last remaining protesters who were breaching the dispersal order were detained in Whitehall at around 10 p.m. and led away from near the cenotaph. Whitehall later reopened after protesters had wreaked havoc in the area, a Met Police update said, this evening during a planned protest on Whitehall some disorder took place. Officers acted to ensure the disorder was contained. Over 100 people have been arrested for offences including violent disorder, assault on an emergency worker, and breach of protest conditions. Some officers suffered minor injuries. The protest was promoted by actor Lawrence Fox on X, formerly Twitter, on Tuesday. It comes after Jenny Stancombe, the mother of little Elsie who died in the Southport stabbings, pleaded for the violence to end on social media. She said, this is the only thing that I will write, but please stop the violence in Southport tonight. The police have been nothing but heroic these last 24 hours and they and we don't need this. Back in Southport, where the grieving community was clearing up the damage from the riots yesterday, a poster was put up which said, leave our town. We don't need this. Police officers from around the country gathered in Southport in preparation of any disturbances, but the seaside town was unscathed after a shocking night of riots 24 hours prior. Police vans, 
Cars and horses were deployed to the town in preparation of any disturbance. Some 53 officers were injured in Tuesday's violence, which police believe was started by supporters of the far-right EDL group. Four people were arrested after the riots. A fifth man was also arrested on Wednesday night. It comes after officers were called to a separate domestic incident. Officers recognized the man from footage of the disorder in Southport on Tuesday, where it is thought he sustained a head injury. He was taken to hospital where he was reported to have racially abused a fellow patient. The 39-year-old man from Southport was arrested on suspicion of violent disorder, threats to kill and a racially aggravated public order offense. He was taken into custody to be interviewed and conditionally bailed, the force said. Assistant Chief Constable Alex Goss said, Our work to identify all those responsible for the despicable violence and aggression seen on the streets of Southport on Tuesday continues. We have been inundated with images and footage from members of the public who were outraged at the destruction carried out. The individuals involved in the disorder had no regard for the families and friends of those who so tragically lost their lives, and a community in grief. It has been heartening today to see the reaction of the whole community, who have pulled together to clean the streets, rebuild walls and re-glaze broken windows. The mayor of the Liverpool city region, Steve Rotherham, told Sky News earlier that he did not believe violence would break out in Southport for a second night. After riots broke out, Southport locals and builders came together to help repair the mosque walls and clear up. Ibrahim Hussein, the mosque chairman, who was one of eight people trapped inside as rioters hurled missiles at the building, said the community clear up was really humbling and brought tears to his eyes. He said the mosque has been here for 30 years with no bother at all, adding, we love the community and the community loves us. Mr. Hussein described his ordeal as terrifying and horrendous and said there was no reason to target the mosque. Worshipper Iqbal Ahmed, 32, was also trapped inside. He said rioters were calling the mosque on withheld numbers throughout the night threatening to kill them and their families. Along the road, Denise Mace, 51, and her chef husband Graham, 52, had looked on helplessly from upstairs during the riot. It was terrifying, absolutely horrendous. We didn't know if they would come into our house, said Mrs. Mace. The Malakar family feared their Asian ethnicity could make them a target. They turned off the lights as the mob knocked down the garden wall to grab bricks. Pensioner May Small, 71, watched as Yobbs came down her path looking for makeshift missiles. I told them to clear off, she said.